million people in England have been told not to leave home and to avoid contact with others. Now that shielded group of the extremely vulnerable will be able to meet in groups from July the 6th and then go back to work at the end of that month. But what if you can't return to your job? In a moment, we'll be hearing from an employment lawyer, but first of all, Claire Marsha, Marshall from Plymouth, uh, who's been shielding for 12 weeks because she's on immunosuppressant drugs. Good morning. Good morning. And that's a long time, isn't it, to be uh, socially isolated? Yeah, it really is. I mean, when they told us that we'd, we'd have to do that, it was um, it was quite a, a difficult challenge to think about how you would manage your life for, for those weeks. So what do you make of the announcement that you could go back to work? Um, well, I, I think um, I am looking forward to going back to work. I've been in constant contact with my employer um, about how I might go back to work um, and they've been very supportive but I do have concerns about um, the term COVID secure and how that works with um, with my with my job and with other people's jobs. Um, there, are, there are a lot of people who are shielding, who have been shielding, who've had difficulties with their workplace already and um, so getting getting workplace COVID secure it's perhaps um, it's a difficult term anyway to understand, but also if you have a medical if you don't have a medical condition, that's perhaps a lot easier to manage. But when you add in somebody who has got a medical condition, is more vulnerable. How is that going to be managed in in reality for yourself individually and for the whole workplace? Well, let's bring in Sarah Chilton now, who's from the employment law firm CM Murray. And looking at uh, somebody like Claire and other people in the same predicament, what kind of rights do they have if they are worried about going back to work? Hi, so they've got rights uh, to have their health and safety protected, as do all workers. And so what that means is, as Claire's mentioned, the employer should be looking at making the workplace COVID secure. Uh, but I think there's a, an additional obligation on employers, I would say, in respect of looking at the health and safety obligation, where they should really be taking a particular risk assessment approach, where they look at people on an individualised basis and think about what people they have in their workplace who are particularly vulnerable and individually consult with those people as to measures that would make it easier for those people to go back to work. But I also think they should be conscious of the uh, potential anxieties that people will have around going back to work but also not assume that people don't want to come back to work because there may be some people who are very anxious to get back to work. And because as Claire says, she's had this period of isolation. And there obviously are psychological factors as well, aren't there, Claire? I think we can all understand that the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Jenny Harry, said that she understood that some people would be fearful, but perhaps needed to push a little bit as well to get back. Yeah, well, I think we are very fearful. Um, already, um, you know, we've seen an easing of lockdown, which means that we haven't had the um, the same opportunities as the majority of the population to get back it out into society. You know, there was an announcement made very last minute that we could all of a sudden go out, um, but on, you know, that was at the same time as everyone else had been given the, the easing of restriction that they could meet up to six people. So already, uh, week on week, I've seen more and more people who are meeting in groups, people right from the beginning who weren't maintaining social distancing or, or even any of the lockdown sort of restrictions and guidance. And now they're looking at um, reducing the two metre distancing to one metre. Yeah. Actually, you know, yesterday, um, oh, sorry, on Sunday, it was Father's Day, and out in the city where I live, there were massive groups of people drinking on the streets, um, alcohol is also a factor, obviously not in the workplace, um, I hate to add, but actually but, yeah. there are already less safe and spaces, about. yeah, and people are not and listening to, to the lockdown restrictions so, outside, so that puts so, a risk as well. So Sarah, lots of anxieties there, and statutory sick pay is coming to an end. So it will end, because it will, at the moment it's eligible for shielding employees, but obviously if there are no shielding employees, then they won't have eligibility for sick pay. Um, I think one of the challenges for employers, just thinking about what Claire has been saying, is actually enforcing the safety rules that you put in place for your employees. So, you know, I completely appreciate that we have seen people being quite lax about the social distancing and about general measures, and actually an employer is going to need to make sure that they can put in place and implement the rules that they stood determined yet. Sarah Chilton, Claire Marshall, thank you both.